to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's June 20th, uh, 2012, and um, it's cooler in Colorado, where a few of our guests are coming from tonight, and uh, hotter in uh, New York City, where some of the rest of us are. Uh, Gail, we didn't check the temperature there up in uh, Northern California. How's it up there? Oh, Gail, you're muted. <laughs> She's very good at muting. Anyway, unmute so we can talk. Go. There you go. Yeah, we're actually we actually have air conditioning on today, and uh, so we've had a, about a week of a um, hundred degrees, you know, it's around that range. Too. Yeah. And and how's it in Michigan, Jeremy? Welcome to the show, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um, it's like 95, 96, so we've been dealing with uh, very humid weather the last couple of days. So yes, air conditioning is on. Okay. So a little chit chat here. Um, I'm kind of excited. Sometimes we have. Uh, a thousand different ideas and, and lots of things to do and tonight we decided to focus in on one person um, and that's Tommy Bateau um, who was on our show I was going to go back and check Tommy but I think a couple of years ago even I think um, it was about a year ago oh that close okay yeah it was just before I started working at uh, Windsor High so great so um, and we have uh, a couple of other people joining us as we speak but um, Gail Desler is with us, um, um, Deb Kaufman, uh, Jeremy Heiler, Monica Hardy is here, I'm Paul Allison, Shantan Saha is here. Looks like Valerie Burton is going to be joining us as well. Why don't we go quickly and introduce ourselves, so unmute everybody and say hello. Gail, introduce yourself please. Hi everybody, I'm Gail Desler and I'm, I'm in California. I live up in the Sierra foothills, and I work down in the Sacramento area in the Elk Grove School District, um, largest school public school district in Northern California, actually. And, and say a little bit about what you're doing this summer. That's pretty cool. Just briefly. Um, well, we were a guest, and when I say we, my, my um, writing project colleague now. Can you pull your mic down a little bit? We, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There we go. Better. My writing project colleague uh, Natalie Bernasconi and I. Um, have teamed up and for this past year we've been collaborating on a project to teach to provide resources for students and teachers uh, around issues of digital citizenship and so it's, it seems to keep building and building and um, next month we're actually going to head to Seattle Washington Redmond actually and we're going to compete in the US uh, Microsoft's Partners in Learning US Forum and uh, with our digital citizenship project so the the uh, you know they're very upfront that what they're really looking for is STEM projects but um, you know we we've made the uh, first cut so the next cut um, ten projects out of the hundred coming to Seattle um, will go to the international forum in November in Athens Greece and and I just want to give some context also uh, when we started Youth Voices now. A good uh, dozen years ago, perhaps. Um, Gail had already done some uh, connecting people in blogs and so forth, and I think you had the, the name Youth Voices first, and we stole it from you. Um, and Gail has had. Uh, oh, you know what? You did steal it. That's there we go. Totally I admit it. it. At any rate, so Gail's been with us for a long time and, and helping to connect teachers, and we hope uh, you can help us continue to do that um, out there somehow. Deb, you're uh, kind of brand new here. Welcome. Yeah. Hi. Introduce I've yourself. Been, yeah. I've been lurking a lot. I've watched uh, from the sidelines and hanging out with uh, Monica at the BU House. Um, I work at a library and I've homeschooled and unschooled my children and who are now 16 and 20 and getting ready to go off into the world and um, use the skills that they've taught themselves. Wow. And um, I just want other kids to have that kind of freedom of learning um, and so I'm interested in doing that now that I'm pretty much done educating them um, I'm ready to support other children and I'm just here to learn very cool Jeremy introduce yourself please. Uh, my name is Jeremy Heiler I am from the Chippewa River Writing Project in Central Michigan actually it's located on uh, Central Michigan University's campus right in the middle of Michigan and uh, I'm new here. Um, 
uh, to uh, Youth Voices, and uh, I am actually going to be using Youth Voices starting next week with our middle school writing camp at CMU that I will be co-directing with another one of uh, my CRWP colleagues. And uh, I am also going to be using it next year in my classroom as well. So I'm hoping that this next week will be kind of a trial run. I can see what worked, what didn't work, and then I can move forward with it for next school year. Cool. What's new with you, Monica? Welcome. Oh, man. Um, We're old. Whatever you want to say. I'm just, um, I'm really glad that Deb is here. Um, she lives in the same place as Tommy. And um, Deb is one that I've learned quite a bit from. Um, there's a couple unschooling moms that have taught me a lot about deliberately not teaching as I am working with um, the Thompson School District Innovation Lab in Loveland, Colorado. Cool. And I'll say what's new with me. I've been messing with uh, badge stack and uh, thinking about badges, and uh, and I and and fortunately we have Monica and others around to help me be skeptical about it. But <laughs> I have my own skepticism, which is fine. Um, anyway, Gail's holding something. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, so we're, we're, we're I my so I've been having even though I like I go. And proctor a test, which makes me want to, you know, not be, it makes me ill. Um, and then I go and mess around with curriculum. And so that's been fun this week is uh, what I've been messing with. Shantanu, welcome. Shantanu, I, 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 I told Tommy what, that you were coming on and said he's the guy who does all those scratch projects. But introduce yourself, please. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Shantanu Saha. I... Uh, teach at the Baccalaureate School for Global Education in uh, Queens, New York, uh, and I've been there for 10 years. The school is 10 years old, by the way, and uh, I've been there since the beginning. Uh, I've known Paul. You're, you're the only one who knows the password to the server, right? So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just easy. <laughs> Go ahead. I think so. <laughs> I wasn't joking. Go ahead. Yeah, because I think... I think I might have, might have changed it at, at one point just so I could get in uh, <laughs> and, and do work on it. But uh, uh, I've been using Youth Voices uh, for years, and uh, this year I've uh, used it uh, with 8th uh, and 7th grade classes. And uh, uh, in fact, tomorrow and Friday, uh, the kids are, uh, my 7th grade kids are going to be putting up their final projects for the year uh, on Youth Voices. Uh, uh, they've been uh, creating games in Scratch, and uh, we're, uh, I'm going to have them put it, put them up and uh, see what the reaction is. Uh, I loved I loved the way, and we'll have to do another show just with you sometime. But I love the way that your seventh graders looked at your eighth graders' projects before they did their own. Is right. That that was that was pretty neat. That that, that was a deliberate thing. Uh, you know, we had we had some uh, technical issues around that, like uh, as, uh, trying to do a search for those videos. Uh, essentially, either crashed Youth Voices or just uh, yeah. ground it to a halt <coughs> for a while. So I ended up just. Uh, uh, getting the URLs for the individual uh, posts and just uh, giving them a list and say pick uh, three out of this and respond to them. That works. And, yeah. Uh, huh. yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot going on getting the yeah, getting the JavaScript to work on on all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Valerie, welcome. Introduce yourself, please, and then we'll get to you, Tommy. I promise. Okay. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Um, Valerie Burton, I teach at West Jefferson High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I'm now part of the Greater New Orleans Writing Project. I'm happy to say thank you, Paul. That's, that's partly due to you. So and when did that start? It started about two weeks ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's, like, that's, a, that's a lot of fun. Um, and I look forward to, I'm getting a new class. I'll, I'll be teaching soft, uh, juniors and seniors next year. And I look forward to getting my juniors and seniors onto Youth Voices and publishing, writing, and collaborating, and 
hanging out with you guys more than I did last year. Cool. So we have Chris Sloan at least twice here. <laughs> Chris, which part of you is coming? When he gets here, he'll introduce himself. That's fine. Tommy, um, introduce yourself a little bit more. Um, you're a, would you say you're a second or third year teacher? And then this is, uh, yeah, this is my second year teaching at Windsor High. And um, I, I did long-term subs before that for about a year. Um, and uh, it's great to be here, and it's great to see other people from Colorado. I feel almost like I should look this way when I'm talking to somebody farther <laughs> down on the, on the list there. Um, but I see that both uh, Monica and Deb are from, from Colorado. So it'd be, I think it would be great if we could get you know, more teachers using it around here. Because whenever I look at the map, on Youth Voices, I always feel like, oh, geez, I'm the only one out here. Um, so that would be great if we can uh, figure out how to arrange that somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I used uh, Youth Voices uh, quite a bit last year. I did three major projects on it. And then I also used it um, you know, as a place for students to test out ideas and uh, look at other people's uh, work and comment on it. So I really, I really loved it for that. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've uh, you've done other things too. So uh, we'll we'll talk about that as well as we go. Okay. But but um, one of the things we thought um, just in, in in talking about how to proceed here is that we'd give about ten minutes on each of the three projects. Me. Okay. And, and then see uh, how that goes from there. Okay, and that sounds good. Just so we can kind of cover some bases here. Okay. Um, well, uh, I guess I'll start. I'll try out this screen share and see how that works. Um, and okay, so let's see if I can get to something here. You got it. Yeah. Here's the here's the first project um, that I did uh, with my media studies classes, and I was really looking for a way to have them. Uh, do a little bit of research and without you know making it seem like a research project and so I, I put together this idea where they would uh, um, look for a um, first we started out with one of the other missions on Youth Voices which is the 10 questions one and so they kind of explored around and discovered what they were interested in writing about and then after doing that I had them find an article that was uh, related to it in some way or other and then in when they wrote the articles, they would uh, combine uh, sort of, you know, research uh, based on an official article somewhere, along with um, something that made it attractive to a to an audience, like something you could put into a magazine. And um, they really got into it, and they created some great projects um, and a really wide variety of different things, um, you know, incarceration rates. Uh, role model for siblings, cars of the futures, etc., um, which is why I really like that uh, 10 questions because you get a real wide variety. Um, the one I wanted to, to share with you is this one um, that this student did on Brandy Norwood. Um, and there just the only reason I want to share this one is she um, asked me to write a uh, and see I had them include references down at the bottom and all that kind of stuff. So it, Tom, they really. Tom, could you, uh, sorry to interrupt, but could you explain, th they, they were to find two sources, they had to be different in some way. Could you just go over that one more time? Yeah, they had to have two sources, at least two sources. This student had three, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the sources had to be more um, kind of scientific related to the bigger question. Um, like, for example, this student's question was on um, motherhood and what makes a good mother. And so she found one article that was, um, you know, kind of a psychological study, something like that. And then in addition to that, they had to find an article that had sort of a mass appeal, something that would make it um, interesting for an audience. Uh, mm -hmm. So if they were to publish it in a magazine, um, that is what would pull the people in. And so she found an article, I think it was actually from a blog on Brandy Norwood, who I think is a, a singer. I'm not I'm not really sure who it is, but it's some, some famous person. Um, and so in the article itself, they had to combine those and include information from both of the sources. Um, and so it's, uh, it's kind of a, it, research, uh, you know, and, and bring in um, many different perspectives. Um, and the only reason I included this one is a lot of these, um, whenever I've used youth voices or got students published in some way, 
um, <clears throat> students get into it more. And a lot of times students who really don't participate in my normal classes um, will do these kind of projects um, because they, they know that other people are going to be looking at it. Um, and this one I just wanted to share because she had me, she asked me to write a, uh, a letter of recommendation for colleges and I included this in it. I said, oh, this was a great example of, um, you know, uh, her creating something that was research based but it also was very artistic and explored a lot of different ideas and she ended up getting a scholarship based on it. Um, and so, I think just that aspect of Youth Voices is that it's out there and other people can see it is really important and uh, something that should be, you know, done more in school, I think. Do you, do you know what, um, later we're going to watch a video, so let's, let's also appreciate writing and do you mind reading it? It's not oh, that sure, long. I can if you like, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, um, so this is Brandy Norwood, Is She the Ideal Mother? And a uh, wonderful student, Joe is her name. She also uh, participated in uh, the movie project that I'll share later on. Um, and so the article goes, uh, Brandy Norwood is defined as a good mother due to several reasons. The first reason being she knows how to balance her uh, career and raise her daughter. I think her daughter's name is Sarah in a mm -hmm. safe and private environment. Not only does Brandy want to create a safe environment for Sarah, she also does not want her involved in television at her current age. A uh, numerous amount of people would argue and say it is Brandy's husband that has decided to keep her away from the media, but others would disagree and say she was the one who wanted her to stay away from the spotlight. Rather, it was her husband's or her idea to keep Sarah away from the media. Brandy has always expressed that if one, say, Sarah want to get involved in television, she will be there to back her up. But before so, she wants to make sure she is old enough to know the consequences of being famous and that she experiences how it is to have a somewhat private life. Brandy is also defined as a good mother because she puts Sarah's needs in front of her own, which is what a good mother should always do. For Brandy, trust is extremely important. Therefore, she made a decision to become her daughter's best friend and less of a parent. Brandy seems to think this is the right way to raise her daughter due to the fact that Sarah will always be honest with her no matter what. Other parents could argue that this is an incorrect way to raise a child, but if the method of being a friend before parent is more effective, what is so wrong? A good mother should not only be caring and loving toward her child, but also her family. The treatment the mother's family get will in the future affect the relationship the child has with the rest of her family. Brandy Norwood sets another good example for a good sister. <clears throat> her brother Ray J has been during countless uh, reality shows and is mostly known for his music, which Brandy has been supporting him in from the beginning till the end. Brandy has also been involved in some reality shows Ray J has been uh, doing, which would of course make their relationship stronger and keep them closer together. In an article uh, published by the SF Gate, they talk about women's image of the 21st century mom and how every woman has their own opinion on what a good mother is. The article describes good mothers as hardworking but harried, loving and indulgent, seeking support from friends rather than family, and feeling guilty, guilty, guilty about not doing a better job at home. Deborah Tannen, a professor of linguistics at Georgetown University and the author of the best-selling You're Wearing That, Understanding Mothers and Daughters in Conversation, explains that daughters seeing their mothers as confidants and best friends is a development that's unusual in the history of humankind. But is Deborah Tannen correct, or is Brady Norwood's method of being a friend more effective? Mothers are not just the women that feed their children, get them dresses, and drive them to school every day. They are also role models. A survey was done, and over a third of the women say that sometimes uh, feeling like they're turning into their mothers, which they thought was a nice feeling. 47-year-old Janet Bengston, who is a mom to three teenagers, uh, teenage sons, explains that I realized recently that I talk the same as my mother, that when my feelings are hurt, I get very quiet, hold my breath, and count to ten like she used to do. So in other words, mothers can have a huge impact on our lives, whether we grow up with one or one day want to become one. We all need to figure out how we want our children to be raised, because eventually one day it is who they will become. And then she has the references listed down at the bottom. Cool. So who would like to uh, talk back to Tommy about that piece? What do you see there that that student's doing? Jump in, folks. <laughs> well, can I, can I start off by asking Tommy a question? Sure. Um, the, the 10 question, whatever, what was that again? The 10 question like inquiry thing that the kids had to do? Yeah, Is that's it? it's one of the missions on Youth Voices. I think okay. it's under Literature and Inquiry. Right. And I don't know who wrote it, but it, it was there when I uh, 
was looking around last year. Okay. And uh, in it, they have to, um, I, I spent a couple of days working on it, and they spend uh, time writing 10 questions about the world that they have, and then also 10 questions about themselves. And then after that, they kind of narrow it down to one that they're really interested in. And so, you know, they get a wide range of questions, and then they narrow it down to one. And I, I've used it several times. It worked great for this project. I also used it for a, uh, a research, another research paper that, I'll, that we did postmodern uh, movies with. Um, and I find it's just a great way for them to really uh, narrow down their ideas and figure out what it is they want to research. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was something you created or if it was actually on there, so that's that's good to know. Yeah, it's actually on Youth Voice. I could try to find the the link for you. My my and favorite my favorite emails to Tommy are the the stuff your students are putting up is really great. Um, guess what I want, and what I always want is his description of uh, what his students did. And so we do get um, eventually we get those up, and then the students' work is is next to that description. So most of what you see here will be there available on Youth Voices somewhere. Um, I'll go back and, and say that that idea of the 10 self, 10 world questions comes from uh, James A. Bean, which, who's an Australian I, I, educator and wrote a book about democratic education, I think it was. Um, he, he actually imagines that the whole middle school curriculum could be um, based around getting just kids questions um, and and so it's all about so and, and I think it's important in youth voices because uh, it's uh, kind of makes clear that what we hope kids are working on are the writing and doing projects on things that they're passionate about things they really care about questions they really have um, so yeah great um, it's great to have it come back here that way um, other thoughts about the the piece of writing um, Research is also a really important thing that happens a lot on, on Youth Voices. And, and what's so interesting is to see how different people do research. Um, and I don't know if Chris Sloan is uh, able to talk to us yet, but it's fascinating to watch his kids do research, and it's been fascinating to watch Jamal, a teacher here in the Bronx, have her kids do research, and, and to kind of see different takes on that. And certainly, um, Tommy, your take with this news item was a research project of a sort. How would you see it as research? Um, how did it compare to other research projects you've done? Well, OK. Um, I think generally, uh, when students think of research, uh, I mean, what I've experienced is they tend to focus just on, uh, whoa. Picking up a lot of noise there. That's okay. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. They tend to focus just on the um, kind of the scholarly articles, and they um, they don't get into it so much. And so I was really looking for a way for them not only to find out information about whatever subject it was they were interested in, but also find a way to kind of relate to it more and to compare it to other people that they're interested in. And so I really just tried to focus on, you know, you have to get the research, but you also then have to find some way to relate it to a larger world. You know, if you can find um, a, a musician or a, a, um, a media personality that you really like that's also thinking about this issue, um, then that's great because they can kind of compare their own thoughts to what another person that, they're, that they kind of consider as a mentor is thinking about the same thing. And so I really try to just use it as a way to have them engage more with the idea and see it from another perspective rather than just their own and kind of the official research. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Any other thoughts anybody have? Any questions about this project? Or ideas you'd like to push us and Tommy on? Anything. I, yeah, right. actually, I, I, just, this is Gail. I just wanted to comment. Um, I already liked the project when I saw the heading that it was on news and giving kids chances to explore things they care about in the news. Um, you know, I think one thing that has disappeared in the testing environment, and I'm going to speak more from the elementary schools because it seems like this last year I've been hanging out um, more there than middle or high school, 
Um, but just that, you know, in the old days when kids would bring the news article, you know, and give a little recording of this article, um, I don't see that anymore. And so uh, somewhere um, in the curriculum, I, and I think, you know, starting in elementary, students have to have these opportunities to explore the news and to delve into those pieces that really intrigue them. So I think it's a great project. Great. Shall we move to another one? Okay. Um, let's take. We can always look. circle back if people. Sure. Start. Yeah. I want to take a look at the um, project that I did. That was a real multimedia project because that's another reason I like Youth Voices. It's a way to to really. Um, you know, share the multimedia aspects, which I have, this is the only way I've really found in a classroom to do that. Um, so I'll take a quick look at the the mission that I created that was with that. Um, that is here, um, and it's on Youth Voices. And uh, basically, they, we started with the same uh, 20 questions mission. Here's a link to it. Um, and then they needed to find... Do, do they have to do the 20 questions again, or can they just go back to what was there already? This, yeah, th they... this was a totally different class. This was my American oh, was, okay. Lit class. Okay. Yeah, okay. so we did the same thing in my American Lit class. Um, and then once they had found a question that they were interested in, there were several elements that they had to include in the multimedia uh, presentation. And we were reading the book, The Things They Carried, and so they had to have um, some passages from the book itself, the things they carried that related to their question. And then they had to find um, an interview, um, you know, clips from movies that they could download off of YouTube. Um, and then they also had to uh, talk about how their view on the issue or the question had changed through the process. And they recorded that as well. And then put that layer of audio over the top of it. And I've got one. If